Good evening, my name is Paul Odom. I'm the Director of Field Service for the Del Marvin Council. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Uh, we're here to do a Family Friends of Scouting uh, presentation training. With me tonight, we have Mary Lewis, our Sussex Family Friends of Scouting Chair, and Dennis Reddington, one of our family presenters. Uh, they're going to uh, teach you and train you how to do a Family Friends of Scouting presentation. So first off, I just wanna say thank you for watching this video. That means you're uh, planning on being a uh, presenter for us and uh, thank you for all your support that you do for scouting. With that, I'll turn it over to Mary to talk to us about um, what she puts into her presentation. So again, I'm Mary. And normally when we go in, we start off our presentation, we explain who we are. We tell them, you know, I'm Mary Lewis. I am the Friends of Scouting Chair for Sussex County, but I also deal with our pack and our troop and any jobs that I have on that. So I don't just wear one hat, I wear multiple hats. Um, I go into a little bit about myself. Uh, I have two boys that are in scouting. I give a little bit of the backstory. Um, I'm prior military. I knew scouting because of my brother, and I go into that, my kid's dad. So I try to put in a lineage, almost if I have one. If you're new to scouting and you don't have anything with the kids and you're trying to do this, try to find something that you may know something about. Um, if you have a grandparent or if you have siblings, family members, anybody you can try to pull in to help you try to make you seem, you know, it's important to you and why it's important to you. You definitely want to give reasons for um, what scouting has done for you, what scouting has done for your kids. If you are very active in your pack or your troop, you want to say what it has benefited for your kids in your pack and your troop. Um, like our, our pack, we have multiple kids that are families that have multiple children that has helped to get kids re-signed up for the year or even summer camp. I have multiple family members in my troop, so I always bring that into it that it helps out around our local area and I try to give examples for that part and what it benefits to help my kids out that I deal with. Um, you also, if you know of families that have had some hardships, you don't have to single them out. You don't have to say anything on that. You just sit there and say, you know, you have families that have not gotten to work. Um, you want to give opportunities for families that have a little bit of hardships without those families knowing that the person next to them could be it. You can also bring that. You know, you could be looking at the person to the left of you or the person to the right of you, and that person may need help, but they're not going to ask you for it. That's where they can ask a leader or if a leader knows and they can help them out that way. That is definitely what our Friends of Scouting is for. And that's what we try to put in our presentation is that Friends of Scouting is to help anybody that needs it, that um, could just use a little bit of help. Even if it's like, I've got it, I've got it. If it can help you, let them help you. You also want to try to tell them um, as we go over our brochures, the amounts that we have per donations, let everybody know that they don't have to give the max because not everybody can afford the max. People can't afford to have $100 taken out of their paycheck every month. Um, I break mine down. I tell them that I break mine down because it helps because I can't afford to bring it down all at one time. But I also tell them that $5 counts. $5 from everybody in the room can help out a scout. It doesn't matter. If that's what they can give, that's what they can give. And that's so you just want to give out to make sure that they understand that every little bit counts whatever they can give. If they want to give $5 a month, then they can sit there and do that. And we'll figure out, we'll explain to them how to fill out the form and make sure of that. The one thing you want to try to do is make it as personable as you can and try to relate with the audience. If you need to write a script, please write a script. I do a lot of the same things Mary does. Uh, you want to interact with the audience. If you're stuck behind a podium, that would drive me insane. I try to move around the room. I have a voice that carries fairly well, but I teach for a living. So if you are in a small, uh, more intimate venue, then you can move around the room and interact with the families. If you're stuck behind a podium, just make the best of it and, and try and get that. The big thing is talking to the microphone and make sure that you're vocalizing what you want to say and make sure that uh, the people in the back especially can hear you. Uh, we want to make sure that your message gets across. Do not insult their intelligence. Give everybody one of these. Hit some of the high points in here, but please do not read this pamphlet to them. You can, they can take this part home. They can rip off the back and give it back to you. The rest of it is for them that they can take home. But again, be familiar with what's inside here so that you can make sure that the people are aware that you have some idea what's going on. Know what the, the pledge values are, 250, 500, 750, and 1,000 so that you can get them or their appropriate recognitions. Um, I always like to connect. I've been a scouter on Delmarva since 1984, so I have lots of stories uh, that I can share. 
the biggest thing you don't want to do though is come off as fake or dishonest. So if you don't know about something directly, either learn more about that particular topic and facet uh, of how the Delmarva Council is run. Give them important pieces of information, like we are one of the most fiscally responsible councils in the entire country. Uh, some of the big questions you're going to get asked is, well, I just paid $150 to register my kid. Why do I have to pay more money? And again, be honest with them. All of that money does not, none of that money stays here on the Delmarva Council. All of that goes to national. The Delmarva Council has to be self-sustaining. And it's through the pledges of the Friends of Scouting program that allow those things to come forward. So we need to make sure that we have uh, our facts straight on those kinds of things. Know what some of the money is going for. Camperships is one of the big ones that we go for. Our capital gains projects, we have a lot of money that goes into helping to renovate uh, and switch things over now that we're co-ed uh, for most of our programs. We have the opportunity to rebuild some of our infrastructure at our camps, keep these things renovated. Rodney's starting 100 this year, so there's a lot of things that are, have been around. Uh, my brother and I like to go up to Camp Rodney and spend some time talking about, you know, our grandfather and our father spent time in this camp. Our uncle was here. And, and now my fourth generation Delmarva Council Scouter daughter is coming to these camps. And some of the facilities have been here the entire time. So those are upgrades. Henson is pushing 60 years old soon. So these, these are some facts that they need to know that help them to understand where this money is going and what we're using it for. And yeah, you're going to get questions about the lawsuit and things like that. If you don't know the answer, just be honest with them. Be, be forward with the information that we do know. We wanna make sure that we also have our patch incentive program and uh, make sure that they realize they're not buying these patches. They're not spending $250 or $500 for one of these patches. Kind of like when you're watching the PBS presentations. It's our gift to you as a thank you for the opportunity that we have to come and to serve scouting. We wanna make sure that we also don't eat up too much time. So. Make your presentation short, sweet, and to the point. Go through the pieces. I always like to start off with some kind of a joke, uh, usually for me because I'm involved in so many things and many of the people in the room have already met me through day camp or one of the other activities that we do. Uh, then I can usually make a joke about if you don't know who I am, you'll be one of the lucky ones because I, I get around so much and it usually breaks the ice a little bit. But you have to be you and you, have to, you come from where you are on those kinds of things. Get into the heart of your presentation, tell your personal story, tell them what the money's being used for, where it's going. Talk about the fact about camps are going up in price every year because we all know that. We know that everything is increasing in price. So the food costs are going up for our houses, the food costs are going up for summer camp. We have to raise the prices on those things. So this is an opportunity for us to give back to the people in the community that are, are less fortunate and don't have as much and can't afford to, to spend the money to go to summer camp uh, that, that we may be able to do. So. If you can give the money you can give, give the money you can give and move on from there. Plus two, doing a good presentation is to make sure you have a solid close. You want to make sure that they know that you're, the Cub Scouts or the Scouts BSA or whatever program you're involved in, that's the important part of the evening. Make sure you recognize that. Thank them for their time. Make sure you say, and now we're going to get on to the more important things and these folks and their awards and actually give them an applause or a, a, some kind of a thumbs up or things like that. And then you can have them fill these out and get them back to you. One of the incentives we like to do in Sussex, we actually have like a go box and it has these things and the patches and the pens in it, a little Tupperware container. We have everything ready to go. We, we pass it off from person to person as we do presentations and pass it around. We collect all that stuff during the meeting and we always, uh, one of the things we do is we actually try to bribe the kids, especially the Cub Scouts, get a bag of Dum Dums for like $5 and it'll last you almost all your presentations. And you can... The kids will come running with these things if they know there's a dum-dum. A sticker doesn't mean a lot to them. They like those. But they'd rather have some candy or a piece of gum or something like that. So if you can give away something like that as an incentive, you'll see those hands shoot up and those kids will come running across the room to hand these things in. And you'll have a much higher percentage on the success rate. So, Paul? Yes. I'm going to go over just a few things real quick before we get to Mary and Dennis's presentation. Yes. Uh, what to do before the presentation. So a week before the presentation, you want to reach out and make sure you have the right date, time, and location. Uh, some things do change, so I'll reach out to the unit leader to make sure you have the correct date, time, location. Make sure that they know you're coming. They might have given you, uh, they might have given the district a date uh, back at recharter time or earlier in January, and it may be three months since uh, before their presentation. And just you want to make sure that the um, confirm the date, time, location. Make sure that they know you're coming. Uh, to expect you. Um, with that, you also want to bring, if you have a script, please bring a script with you. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, I always try and jot some things down. But we'll also, in this video, uh, we'll link to uh, this one, what to do before and after the presentation, and we'll also link our script. Um, 
how to come up with the best script for you. Uh, so with that, just another highlight, make sure you bring plenty of pins. Uh, like Dennis was talking about the box that they put together, it always has uh, a stock full of pins. They'll have, make sure they have the FOS brochures in there. They'll also have the stickers uh, that goes out. Everybody gets a sticker. Uh, if they turn in a pledge card, no matter how much money is on that pledge card, they will get a sticker. Um, it also has this, uh, this patch. Um, all the patches that we're doing, it's an eight year series, but I'll talk more about that later. Uh, make sure you bring those with you. If you don't have an example of the $750 recognition or the $1,000 recognition, one is a, a journal that they can get. The other one is a book bag, a Delmarva Council book bag for the $1,000 donors. If you don't have an example of those, um, just make sure that they're aware of it, that there is a recognition. And as Dennis said, it is recognition items. They're, they are not buying a book bag for $1,000. It is thank you for your donation and being recognized by it. Other things you want to do before the presentation, so the day of, you want to make sure you arrive early. Arrive to the meeting uh, 15 or arrive 30 to 45 minutes early. Make sure you know where you're going. Make sure you're there in plenty of time. Help with setup. Help putting the chairs out. Help greet people. That way they know they know who you are. And it's easy. Hi, my name is Paul. Um, they, they're they proud of that pack. Just, just ask them questions. How do they enjoy the pack? What's their favorite thing about it? How What got them involved in scouting? How did they join? Uh, easy ways to make a quick... A uh, quick conversation with them. I uh, get to know the people that are there. One of the things that we always, the best practice is ask to go early. As Dennis said, and, um, the best practice is, is try to go first. That way you can say, and now we're going to get to the more important things of the Cub Scout or the uh, Scouts BSA uh, advancements. Uh, last thing I'll talk about is, uh, Dennis already alluded to it, get the Scouts involved. Uh, so my best practice, what I would tell you is, if you're going to a Cub Scout pack, Ask for the Weeblos or the Arrow Light, um, Arrow Light Den to come help you out, to pass out the pledge cards, to pass out the pens. Make sure every parent in the room gets a pledge card and gets a pen. Uh, leaders included, parents, leaders, uh, make sure everybody gets one. If you're at a Scouts BSA unit, I usually ask for the younger kids in the Scouts BSA, so your sixth, seventh graders or your scout ranks or tenderfoot ranks to help out. Um, ask the senior patrol leader. Uh, as in scouting, it's um, youth led so ask the senior patrol leader if he can uh, help you get four or five scouts to pass out pledge cards and pens I usually ask for four scouts I give two pledge two scouts the pledge cards two scouts the pens I tell them when I'm gonna go it's gonna be right after the opening so right after the scout oath and scout law they're gonna call me up to do my presentation can you make sure at that point you pass out all the pledge cards and all the pens and then the same thing of as Dennis said, bring dum-dums with you. As soon as somebody raises up a pledge card, go grab the pledge card, bring it back to me, I'll give you a dum-dum, whatever it may be. Um, but with that, I'm gonna call uh, Mary and Dennis back up here one at a time to give their presentation. Hi, I'm Mary Lewis, and I'm actually your Friends of Scouting presenter for this evening. Um, I just want to go over everything about what we're doing and what we are for. So um, again, I'm Mary Lewis. I am your FLS Sussex County Chair. I am also a day camp director for Sussex County. I also am the fundraiser, fundraiser coordinator and um, treasurer for my troop and my pack in Laurel. I have two boys. Um, my oldest is an Eagle Scout. He was in 2020, so he went through COVID when he went through everything. So there was some things that we got to miss out on. Hopefully we get to do them soon. Um, I also have another son who is now in the Boy Scouts. Both of my boys started as Tigers. And um, it's been a whirlwind. I was a single mom when I started. My brother is an Eagle Scout. My oldest son, his dad and his uncles were Eagle Scouts. So to my son, he wanted to make sure he made as an Eagle Scout. So scouting has been a big influence in my family. When I was little, I didn't get to do Scouts. So there was no Girl Scouts for me. Um, my brother went in. I was already in the military by that time frame, So I wasn't involved in it. But I'm very involved when it comes to my boys. My daughter tried Girl Scouts out, it didn't work. So we did try scoutings in multiple different forms. Um, with Friends of Scouting, it's beneficial because we help out our, our, our county. Um, so Sussex County, we know that our money for Delmarva Council comes back to our kids here. It comes back to your kids, it comes back to our troops, it comes back to our packs, it comes back to our camps and everything that we need for that. Um, Everybody should have a brochure. I'm gonna go over the brochure a little bit with you. So on the brochure is 
some reading material that you can read in it, um, both sides. Go through it, skim through it if you can. But as I'm going through this, just know that I'm just giving you this information so that you guys can sit there and deal um, with knowing to figure it out if you want to take that time to do that first. There is the top part. It says that you would like to be to join to be a sustaining donor. Sustaining donors mean that every year, your amount that you have is what you will be pledging for those amount of years till you tell them that you no longer want to do it. So if you want to keep doing it for, you know, this year, next year, for the next five years, how many years your kids are in scouts, you're more than welcome to. If you want to keep going, you tell them when you're ready to stop. There is also an, underneath of that, the amount that you would like to do. There is a 250 and 500. Now, many of you see me carrying this. This is our eight years of scouting. Um, there is ways to go back for the last couple years. We are in 2023 now, so this is the patch that everybody will get. There is red for 250, there is silver for 500. We also have other um, acknowledgements that we have if you go higher than that. There is also where it says monthly amount. If you can't give the amounts that they're asking for, that the boxes are for, that's fine. If you can give $5 a month, that comes out to $60 total for the year. You can put monthly $5. You can put what you can. There's also other, whatever you can give. If you can give $5, because that's all you can do right now, that's perfectly fine. If you want to give it monthly, that's perfectly fine as well. Um, if you do go for the whole eight years, you get this center patch. So as I always like to joke around that, eventually I'll just have this on my back, on my shirt, so that I just proudly take it around. I do break mine out monthly because I can't afford to just give out all at one time. It is also tax deductible. You will get a letter at the end of your um, time frame of paying for everything and you'll um, turn that in with your taxes. The part about it underneath of it is about you. You want to give all of your information and if you have a trooper or pack that you are a part of. The next one is my company does matching. Inside your brochure is the companies that do match. If you by chance know that your company does, you can add it onto it. If it's something that your company may be willing to, you can get a hold of your HR department and they'd be willing to help you. Um, bill me. This will go for the year. You can have it once, one time, what month you want to, quarterly or monthly. So if it is something you're willing to pay monthly, then you go ahead and do that. You want to sign and date that. The other options or the parts underneath is how to pay it. There's cash check and credit card if you do do a credit card please explain everything on the bottom and please sign a date we have to have those in order to do so now friends of scouting helps out so if you are a family that could be using it we help with campership during the summer times we help with um recharter if at the end of the year because it's always right around christmas time and everybody's getting a little tight at that time frame if it's something that you can use and you can ask for let your leader know and we will get a hold of them and you will help out. Friends of Scouting helps out in numerous amount of ways. It doesn't go towards um, the higher ups. It stays in our council. It stays with our kids. It stays with what we have around here. Um, we are also one council that actually doesn't have a problem with using our Friends of Scouting um, finances to help out going to a different council um, when it comes to summer camp. So know that we do try to help out and make sure our kids have the maximum experience anywhere we can. So if you can, please fill out your card. When you're done with your card, you raise your card up. We'll have the little ones come around to pick up your cards and we'll go from there. And I appreciate all your help and congratulations to everybody who has something for today. So thank you, Mary, so much for your uh, presentation. I uh, just want to reiterate some things that Mary uh, talked about. Uh, one is our campership program. So yes, we do support uh, scouts to go to other camps outside of our councils. We are one of the few councils that does that. And um, we're very proud to do that. That's where Friends of Scouting money goes to. When we say Friends of Scouting dollars goes right back uh, to this program, to this unit, it does. Um, so do not hesitate to reach, uh, to reach out to us. Uh, camperships are all due by April 1st. Uh, so if you haven't got that uh, form yet, please take a look. She also touched base about our membership discount application. Uh, for any new scout that wants to join scouting, we want to make sure that we remove the financial barrier if that is going to be if that is going to be a barrier for them to join scouting. So our membership discount application is funded through our Friends of Scouting dollars to make sure no scout is turned away. Because one thing the council can help out with is registration fees and camperships. Where the council cannot help out, where Friends of Scouting dollars cannot help out, is if you have a pack due or troop dues or going on a, a troop camping trip. 
Um, so please let us help out where we can to make sure every family can join because we know when they do join your unit, they may still need help to do those camping trips, to do the, the pack dues and so on and so forth. So again, thank you, Mary, so much. At this time, um, I ask Dennis to do his. Again, remember our, our time frame. We ask units for 10 minutes of time. We want to stay uh, within that 10 minutes. Hey guys, my name is Dennis Reddington. I'd like to thank you guys for letting me come here and talk to you today. I am here for the Friends of Scouting presentation. Uh, I do quite a few things for the Delmarva Council. If you don't know who I am, then you must be new to the program because I do quite a bit around here and it's really kind of a fun opportunity I have to give back for all the amazing opportunities that I had uh, through scouting. I've been a Delmarva Council scouter since 1984 in one uh, version or another. Uh, my grandfather was a scouter, my father and my uncle were scouts, my brother and I got to be scouts together, and uh, I've been fortunate enough to now be one of the leaders for my daughter's troop, so she is a fourth generation Delmarva Council scouter. If I could get the volunteers to come to the front to uh, pick up these brochures and these pens to hand out to the folks. Thank you. That way we can multitask here. Uh, so. The Friends of Scouting campaign, most people don't even know what that is, uh, but the Friends of Scouting is our opportunity to fund the Delmarva Council. And we do realize that it is kind of a financial burden for people. We know that everybody just paid the $123 registration fee just a few months ago for recharter. Uh, only a small portion of that comes back to the Delmarva Council. The majority of our fundraising actually comes from the Friends of Scouting program. Uh, and what does that cover? People always ask. It covers things like, primarily it goes for helping out scouts get to summer camp and our uh, big activities that we have for the year. There are campership opportunities within the Delmarva Council that other councils don't offer. It's our opportunity to pay uh, to help a scout get to what is the most worthwhile part of the program is their summer camps and day camps. Uh, it's Even if they're not within the Delmarva Council, they have the opportunity to, to get a portion of their summer camp paid for uh, if they can't afford that opportunity. So we're one of the few councils in the country that actually does that. We also uh, help to re restructure our, our capital gains projects and things like that. Uh, we have to keep our camps up. Our, Rodney is turning 100 years old this year. Henson Scout Reservation is pushing 60. Uh, these camps have been around. My, my father and grandfather and uncle, they were hanging out at Camp Rodney when, they, when my father was my age and younger. And some of those buildings and some of those things are still there from that time frame. So a lot of that infrastructure needs to be rebuilt. Uh, the, the other thing that we have in the Delmarva Council that's uh, new is the opportunity we have as far as helping scouts to register for camp. I started, as I said, in 1984 when a friend of mine came across the street and he said, you want to come over to my house on Tuesday night and do something fun. And that was great. It was, I was hooked from that night forward. And I've been doing scouts pretty much my entire life since then. Uh, with only a few years off in between for college and, and starting a family. And it, it's, it's sad to think that right now, especially with financial times being what they are, everything's going up in cost, and a lot of families have to make the choice between a great extracurricular activity for their children and uh, a, an even better extracurricular activity or putting food on the table. So we in the Delmarva Council have started a new program this year that uses the Friends of Scouting funding to help to pay for registration fees so those scouts that can afford that $123 fee to be a part of the Delmarva Council and to take part in the local scouting activities, which dollar for dollar, it's cheaper than any other sport you could play or any other activity as far as I've ever come across. Uh, I, I know how much it is having kids in band and soccer and all those other things. It, it's getting to be a ridiculous cost across the board, but dollar for dollar, it is the best character development program in the world, uh, hands down, either way. So. We're gonna ask that if you can donate something today that you can donate something. Donate whatever you feel comfortable doing. If you look on the brochure that we had, that we just handed out, there's a lot of information in here about the Delmarva Council and scouting in general. I'm not gonna insult your intelligence by reading this to you. So I'm gonna let the, you have that. Take a look on the back, fill it out. If you can give $5, give $5. If you can give $1,000, give $1,000. If you don't have it with you tonight and you wanna do it, you can write us a check. Put bill me on here. You can give us a credit card. We can take care of it another way. But these are our opportunities to, to give to the scouts. We have uh, some thank you gifts that we have here. This is the third year of our eight-year patch program. I'm a huge patch guy. Those of you who know me know that. This is uh, this year's patch that we have for 2023. And it's available with the red border at the $250 gift level. And again, it's just our thank you. We're not buying a patch. It's just our thank you to for letting us come in and... Uh, help the scouting program. The silver board one, that's for the $500 opportunity. 
At $750, we have a nice Delmarva Council leather-bound uh, journal, and at the $1,000 level, we have a Delmarva Council backpack that we would like to offer as a thank you gift for letting us, uh, for, for helping the scouting program out around here. And if you want to today, and you just hand this in with some numbers on it, come up here as a thank you for listening to me ramble on for the next five minutes or so. We're going to give you this scouting sticker that you can put on your car, put in your refrigerator, wherever you want. And... Whenever the kids bring these things up, we're going to give you a dum-dum or your choice of a dum-dum or a piece of gum. So your opportunity to uh, get a little candy tonight. So even if you hand it in with $1 on it, I would be appreciative of that. So this is going to continue. If you'd like to be a sustaining member, you don't have to worry about it. And $250 seems like a lot, but if you break it down, it's really about just under $21 a month. So if you can do $20 a month, okay, that's $5 a week. The more you break that down, the better the number sounds. And that's that's kind of how I, I build it to myself is it's my opportunity to give a little bit each day or each week. Money I could spend on fast food or something like that that I probably don't need anyway. Uh, and I can give it to a, a much better cause like scouting. So I'm going to be in the back of the room as you fill these out. As you finish up, if you'd like to go ahead and just raise a hand, I can come around and get these uh, and give your particular uh, your thank you gifts today. And I'm going to get out of the way so that these guys over here, who are the more important reason, the reason we're all here tonight, like to give them a nice round of applause for their accomplishments this year. Thank you, Dennis. Um, thank you, Mary, so much for helping me out tonight doing this family, uh, present, family presenter training. You're welcome, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> um, great time uh, making this video. Uh, again, I want to thank you as well uh, for signing up to help uh, do a, a family friends of scouting presentation. Other things to note is just, again, as I said, keep it clear, keep it concise. We asked for 10 minutes, make sure you stick to that. Please do not go over that 10 minute mark or really try to keep your presentation to about five to seven minutes. Once you go over that, you're losing the attention of the parents, you're losing the attention of the children. Um, and at that point, they're just annoyed with you and may not wanna give you anything. So please make sure you keep this clear and concise. Again, thank you so much um, for helping us out uh, by doing these presentations. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to your local district executive. Um, you can always reach out to myself. I'm sure Mary and Dennis will be willing to help you out as well. Thank you again. Have a good night.